Okay, welcome back. This time we're doing Virtua Fighter 2 on the Sega Mini. And I really don't have that much to say about this game. It's objectively a bad game. There are three tournament fighter games on the Sega Mini. There's Eternal Champions, which I don't remember playing that much. There's Virtua Fighter 2, and there's Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Well, I'm glad they put some tournament fighter games on the Sega Mini. I don't know, I just... This one is really bad. This one shouldn't have been included. If anyone remembers the Virtua Fighter arcade games, they were okay. They were kind of... They were basically Tekken clones. But the Sega Genesis just was not meant to run Virtua Fighter or Virtua Fighter 2. So it doesn't really make sense that they ported it onto the Sega Genesis. And then putting it on the Sega Mini, I just don't get it. So this is probably the worst game on the Sega Mini in my opinion. And it's funny, I, you know, grew up when beat-em-ups were all the rage in the late 80s, early 90s. You had the Double Dragon games, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, Streets of Rage games, Final Fight games, Knights of the Round, King of Dragons, Golden Axe, and on and on. You know, The Simpsons, X-Men. And then, maybe it was, I think it was probably early 1993, you know, Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat blew up and got huge. Next thing you know, it's all about tournament fighter video games. And there really weren't that many great tournament fighter video games, in my opinion. I really liked, you know, obviously Mortal Kombat 2 is awesome. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is awesome. Uh, the Street Fighter 2 games are really good. I like Street Fighter 2. I like Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I like Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers. All those are great. Killer Instinct was awesome. And then, um, the Super Nintendo version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, which was done by Konami, that's outstanding. That is a really great Konami uh, version of a Capcom, you know, Street Fighter II clone. It's great. The one on Genesis wasn't very good. Um... And then maybe after those, there's just a really wide gulf in quality between the, that handful of really good tournament fighter video games and the rest of them. Uh, Primal Rage wasn't that good. The Power Rangers, not good. Um, Shaq Fu, not that good. Clay Fighter, gimmicky, not that good. I guess the Virtual Fighter games were okay. The Tekken games were pretty good, but that was a little later in the tournament fighter craze. Uh, one that kind of sticks out is Time Killers. Great concept, and an okay game. It needed just a little bit more polish. That's one game I wish, instead of having crummy Virtua Fighter 2 on the Sega Mini, I really wish they had done Time Killers. Anyway, let's go ahead and start this. I'm not that good at this game. We'll go ahead and play as Cage, the ninja character, Kage, whatever his name is. Uh, I think I've said basically I won't, all I want to say about this game. It looks bad. The blocking is awkward. The music is terrible. Sound. going to try and string together some simple combos. I'm not very good at special moves or anything like that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the rant. I thought it would be fun to... I don't want to make it sound like I'm just picking on Subway, because what I'm really getting at here, and I'm using Subway as an example, is consumer sentiment. Because what's happened is we're living in a time where prices are starting to go up. And if you're in your 
late 20s or even early 30s or whatever, you might be becoming a more conscientious consumer where you start looking at things that, you know, previously, you know, forking over hard-earned money to pay for certain goods or services might not have... There we go, knocked her right out of the ring. Uh, you might, you know, it might not have been a big deal to, you know, pay a fair price for goods or services. But now prices are starting to go up on a lot. You know, this is kind of an inflation era. You know, purchasing power is starting to go down a little bit. And I, I'm not the right person to explain, you know, how inflation and, you know, cost of goods and services going up or currency, how all that works. What I do know, though, is the purchasing power of the American dollar is down and the price of goods is up. So, you know, I'm in my mid-30s and I'm starting to look at, you know, things that I used to enjoy buying or whatever, how much certain things cost. And I'm starting to think, you know, as a consumer, and I think all consumers should have this kind of mentality. At what point do you walk away from a good or service? At what point have you been, and the word I like is, outpriced? At what point are you as a consumer outpriced by a good or service you used to enjoy? You know, maybe it's... Um, 12 pack of soda, for example. The prices of those have gone up. I don't buy them, thank goodness, but they certainly have gone up. Or the price of cigarettes, for example. Depending on where you live, it can be very expensive. Um, I know in like Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, the price for a pack of name brand cigarettes is still relatively affordable, but if you live in like New York, New Jersey, uh, the New England states like I do. You know, the price of cigarettes is pretty ridiculous. One, ready, Full disclosure, go. I don't smoke and I recommend that you don't pick it up as a habit. You are free to do so if you are 21 years of age or older. But the internet seems to have caught on with Subway. Subway seems to be a brand. Oh, sit down. What was that? A Batista bomb. Sit down. Power bomb. The block is really awkward in this game. Another Batista. And he stops me in the groin. And a warrior splash to boot. And I think what everyone remembers is that for years, Subway was really affordable. They were marketed, you know, really a masterstroke of marketing genius. Uh, he keeps catching me with that move. But a masterstroke of marketing was. You know, Subway had been around since the 80s and the 90s, and then in the early 2000s, I believe it was, when they started marketing themselves as the healthier alternative to fast food. And it was affordable. And I know not everyone likes the ingredients of Subway. You know, some people think that their veggies aren't that fresh. But, you know, for point of reference, compare what you'd get from... You know, the... And I'm being very careful not to shout out too many name brands. I'm picking on Subway because they're a perfect example, but, you know, think of the fast food burger joints that are all over the country. And think about, you know, the ingredients in those. You know, the mayonnaise, the Thousand Island sauce, 
low quality meat, cheese. You know, you compare the ingredients at a fast food burger joint to Subway. You know, it's it's a no-brainer. Subway is it can be, depending on what you put on it. As long as you're not slathering it in mayonnaise and meatballs and some of that other gross stuff. You know, you get a turkey sandwich. Put some cucumbers on there. Ah, come on. No! Oh, goodness. Very lucky to be Jeffrey here. Um, yeah, turkey sandwich, no mayo, lots of veggies. Get it on the multi-grain bread. And, you know, you have yourself a pretty healthy... One, one. Ready, go! You know, alternative to fast food, which is what I miss about Subway. Yeah, if everyone remembers, of course, I'm not going to talk about the allegations against Jared Fogle, but uh, when they made him the spokesperson of Subway, it was an absolute masterstroke of marketing. You know, here's a guy, he's an average, everyday guy, he's not a celebrity, which is lazy marketing. Um, he's someone who was walking, I think about five miles to his local subway. He was ordering, I think a six inch turkey sandwich, no cheese, no mayo, loaded with veggies on the multigrain bread, no chips, no drink, no cookie and probably walking five miles, maybe even doing other exercises. He was morbidly obese, and after, I think, a couple years of doing this as his daily routine, he lost a ton of weight. And I think, um, you know, because he was there every day, the managers noticed. They um, got in touch with their regional marketing director or whatever, and someone had the brilliant idea to take, you know, Jared Fogle and his story of losing weight on Subway and market it, make him the spokesperson. You know, they opened a lot of Subway franchises because of, you know, that very successful marketing campaign. And then they did the $5 foot long, which I love. I know Subway is not the best ingredients, but if I can have a reasonably healthy alternative to fast food for five dollars, you know, it's a value and you know it makes me feel good. And I really miss the five dollar foot long promotion. Why it went away? The Subway seems to have a big problem with their franchise owners. Um, the franchise owners absolutely hated the $5 footlong promotion. They felt that they were losing money on that promotion. There we go. Glad I could beat Jackie on the first try. Well, I'll tell you what. Now, the $5 footlong has basically been replaced with the $10 foot long. You go to Subway these days, the prices have doubled. Uh, they, there are still a couple of the foot longs that you can get for maybe like seven, or pro I think closer to $8. I think it's about $8 for some of their foot long sandwiches, but most of them are $10. The turkey sandwich that I liked is $10 for a foot long. So they've outpriced me. I. You know, that's, I'm not willing to pay $10, because the thing about Subway, you know, when there's a restaurant that you like and the prices start climbing, the complaint is always, well, I can make it at home for cheaper. With Subway, this is actually very true. You know, it's a turkey sandwich. I can make my own turkey sandwich for, oh, I had it. I can make my own turkey sandwich at home terrible voice so you know and it's not like going to Subway is, ex is an experience you know it's not you, you go there you stand in line 
One more hit. Ooh! Gotcha, Wolf. And I remember Subways used to be packed, you know, because of the $5 footlong promotion. This guy always clobbers me. You're probably going to see me lose about five fights to this guy. Nowadays, you know, the last couple times I went to Subway, I, it's never busy. Even during peak lunch hours, it's never busy. So with franchise owners, you know, I understand. You don't like the $5 footlong promotion because you feel like you lose money. Okay, well, how do you feel about going out of business because customers aren't even coming in the door? You know, you have to have promotions and deals if you want to get your customers back. You know, people don't want to come and pay $10 for a Subway sandwich. Nice one-liner. One, and truth be told, in the last couple years, Subways, a lot of the Subway franchises have gone out of business. They've closed something like 2,000 restaurants in the last couple years. So, you know, go ahead and raise your prices, but you do so at your own risk. Some of these customers are never coming back, including me. I'm one of them. I used to love the healthier alternative to fast food. Now. I refuse to pay $10 for a turkey sandwich. And from what I understand, and getting back to the whole uh, problem between Subway franchise owners and Subway corporate, they did try to bring back the $5 footlong promotion a couple years ago. They had to end it originally because Subway franchise owners were complaining that they were losing money over it or they weren't making enough money or something. Um, so the Subway franchise owners got really upset when they tried to bring back, when Subway corporate tried to bring back the uh, $5 footlong promotion. They, um, a lot of Subway franchise owners opted, excuse me, opted their stores out of the promotion while they're doing this nationwide um, advertising campaign. You know, we're bringing back the five, you asked for it, America, you're gonna get it. You're, we're bringing back the $5 foot long. I think it was just a year or two ago. And if you did, if you only vaguely remember it, it's because one, the promotion was pretty confusing. You had to, like buy two and then the third one was five dollars which you know you had to get the app or use digital coupons I can't remember it was really confusing and it really doesn't the promotion first of all you know we're talking about buying a sandwich the promotion should not be confusing it should be simple you walk in and you buy the sandwich for five dollars it shouldn't be this you know, digital coupon, use your phone, buy two, get one for five dollars. Like that doesn't, that's overcomplicating the process. And inevitably it leads to more angry customers because what happens is a customer misunderstands the promotion. They come in the restaurant expecting a five dollar foot long. Then they find out, oh no, you have to buy a couple first and you have to use your phone and you have to order it online. And they, you know, they feel like they've been tricked into coming in the door. And that just, that drives away customers. So one, they overcomplicated it with total nonsense. It's buying a sandwich. Do not make the process of buying a Subway sandwich for $5 any more complicated, unnecessarily complicated than it needs to be. People just want a sandwich for $5. Just give it to them. 
Oh, I lucked out. I beat Akira. But two, a lot of Subway franchise owners opted their stores out of the promotion, which I didn't know they could do that. But whenever you see a commercial that says, at participating locations only, Fight. oh good, it's the Ready. final boss. And I'm, it's really slow. Why is it so slow? Is it supposed to be this slow? Yeah, whenever you see a commercial and it says at participating locations only, what they mean is the franchise owners don't want to do it. And sure enough, within I think two weeks of launching that national advertising campaign, so many franchise owners had opted their restaurants out of the uh, $5 foot long promotion that they had to kill the promotion. They couldn't advertise it anymore because there just wasn't enough. Come on, knock him out. Ah, I was so close to getting a ring out. But so many stores had opted out that they couldn't advertise it. Oh, there I go. Now they're doing this Subway Eat Fresh Refresh, which I don't get it at all. Okay, this guy has everybody's moves. He has... First off, the Eat Fresh... Man, that was easy. This guy was easier than Akira. I guess I beat the game. What a boring, stupid little game. Um, yeah, but they hired a bunch of professional athletes that you just know aren't eating Subway. Like, they hired Tom Brady, and I love Tom Brady. I'll probably do a rant on Tom Brady because he's so awesome. But everyone knows that Tom Brady has an extraordinarily strict diet and training regimen. That's why he's been able to compete at the highest level for as long as he has. Everyone knows he doesn't eat things like Subway. So why have you hired him as a brand ambassador? You know, the Eat Fresh Refresh, it's still Subway. Only now it's $10 instead of 5 And you have professional athletes that you know don't eat Subway advertising it. And there's a couple new menu items. No, the Eat Fresh Refresh is a terrible idea. It should have been healthy alternative to fast food at a good value. That's all the customer wants. The customer doesn't care if Tom Brady is advertising it or not. So Subway has officially lost the plot. They've lost me as a customer. You know, I'm just not willing to spend $10 for a sandwich. And this Eat Fresh Refresh marketing campaign, I think a lot of the Subway franchise owners hate it too because one of the brand ambassadors is uh, U.S. women's national team, you know, former World Cup champion, Megan Rapino, who uh, kind of a divisive figure in the wide, excuse me, in the wide world of sports. So I don't know what Subway's doing. Instead of getting creative and getting back to basics with marketing and promotion and value, they've decided to hire celebrities that we know don't eat Subway. And it's just a slap in the face. You know, we want value. You go on the internet and everyone's noticed, you know, Subway has gotten way too expensive. The stores are closing left and right. And they've decided to hire Tom Brady and Megan Rapino and Steph Curry to try and sell their sandwiches, sorry, you've lost me. So it's important to have those limits as a consumer to say, from this point, as a customer, you've lost me. And until you get back to what I like, you know, good value, then I'm not coming back. 
So, anyway, that's the rant. Subway sucks. Don't waste your money on that garbage. And we'll come back and do something fun next time.